Hi there, welcome back to Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're learning how to calculate the delta H, or the change in enthalpy, of a chemical reaction. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Take a look around at the playlists. That's where the action is. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss a thing on all things AP Chemistry and Honors Chemistry. Well, like I said, in this video, we're learning how to calculate the delta H, or the change in enthalpy, of a reaction. And you might wonder, why would we want to do that? Well, the delta H, the change in enthalpy of a reaction, is going to tell us how much heat is released, or how much heat is absorbed when a chemical reaction takes place. Now, this is going to tell us if a reaction is going to be exothermic or endothermic. And the equation that we use for that is this equation right here. The delta H of a chemical reaction is equal to the sum of all the enthalpies of formation of the products in that process minus the sum of all the enthalpies of formation of the reactants in that process. Now, some students see this equation and they get really nervous. This looks kind of intimidating. We have some symbols here that you might not be very familiar with. Well, don't let this equation intimidate you. I wanna show you how you can do this and how you can solve these problems without too much difficulty. Now, we're gonna take a fairly typical or a fairly simple chemical reaction here and we're gonna calculate the delta H, the change in enthalpy. Now, in order to do this, you have to have a table of the enthalpies of formation of all the substances that are taking place in the reaction. If you're working with a chemistry textbook, there's a good chance that they have a table of all these enthalpies of formation in the very back or in the appendix of your textbook. Now, for your convenience, as you watch this video, if you go down to the description below, I have a PDF document that has the enthalpies of formation of several chemical substances down there for you so that you can solve the problems along with me as you watch the video. So let's start with this. Now, once again, these enthalpies of formation are gonna to have to be given to you in the uh, document or in your textbook. So we'll start with H2O liquid. Now, if we look it up in that table, we see that the enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid is negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Once again, it's worth repeating. They're gonna to have to give you that number. You're not expected to memorize this, okay? Now, that's per mole. I want you to notice that there's a two right here. That tells us we have two moles in this process. So we're gonna to have to take this value that we just wrote down and multiply it by two. So on your calculator, you can see that negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole times two moles gets us negative 571.6 kilojoules. Now, we can do the same thing for hydrogen. We can look this value up on the table, and we can see that the enthalpy of formation of hydrogen gas is zero kilojoules per mole. Now, there are two moles of this, but of course you know any number times zero is still zero, isn't it? So it's still zero kilojoules. For oxygen gas, we can look that value up as well and find that its enthalpy of formation is zero kilojoules per mole. There's no additional coefficient here, so we don't have to multiply this by anything. By the way, just so you know, you'll notice that any element in its most natural state is going to have an enthalpy of formation of zero. That's why we see a couple of these zeros in here. Now, we have to take the sum of all the products and subtract the sum of all the reactants to find the delta H. So let's do that. The sum of all the reactants, well, there's only really one reactant we're dealing with here, so that's negative 571.6 kilojoules. And then the products, we take zero, plus zero, and the math is pretty easy there, it's just zero, isn't it? So delta H is gonna be the sum of the products minus the sum of their reactants. In other words, right side minus left side. So we're gonna take the zero minus negative 571.6 kilojoules. As you probably know, in math, two negatives make a positive, so the answer is delta H equals positive 571.6 kilojoules 
per mole of reaction. Now, depending upon your textbook, they might put the unit a little differently from this. They might write it as kilojoules per mole of reaction. They might write the unit as kilojoules per mole, or they might just write it as kilojoules. Any of those are fine, uh, as long as you have some sort of reasonable unit like that that represents kilojoules in there, you are in good shape. Now, let's take this a step further. This positive sign right here tells us that the system is gaining energy over the course of the process. That means this is an endothermic reaction. Anytime you have a positive number for delta H, that's going to be endothermic. Anytime you have a negative value for delta H, that's going to be exothermic. So just be aware of that. Positive is endothermic. Negative is exothermic. And basically, what this is telling us is that if you were to take two moles of water in its liquid state, you'd produce two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas, and in the process of doing all that, you would absorb, or the system would absorb, 571.6 kilojoules of heat energy. Now, let's try another example. Let's take a look at this one. Here we have a combustion reaction. We have two moles of C2H2, which is acetylene gas, being burned in oxygen. So once again, we need those enthalpies of formation. You can use that uh, chart that's in the description down below to look these up or the appendix of your textbook if you have one, or you can just Google these to be honest. The enthalpy of formation of C2H2 gas is 228.2 kilojoules per mole. And since there are two moles, what do we have to do? We have to times it by two, don't we? So when we multiply that by two, we find that that's 456.4 kilojoules. Now, the enthalpy of formation of oxygen is zero, and we said that that's because the enthalpy of formation of any element in its most natural state is going to be zero. Now, there are five moles of this, so we technically have to times it by five, but of course, that's still zero, isn't it? Now, on the product side of this, we have carbon dioxide gas. That enthalpy of formation is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And since there are four moles of this, we have to multiply it by four. So that gets us negative 1,574 kilojoules whenever we multiply it out. And lastly, we have water. Now, notice this is water in its gaseous form. In the last example, we had water in its liquid form. So be careful not to use the wrong value on the chart. The enthalpy of formation of water in its gaseous form, or water vapor, is negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. We have two moles of that, so we have to times it by two. And so that's negative 483.6 kilojoules. Now, we have to add up all the products. We have to add up all the reactants and do our subtraction. So the reactants will be 456.4 and 0. And so that's just 456.4. When we add up the products, negative 1,574 minus 483.6, that gets us a total of negative 2,057.6 kilojoules. And don't forget, to get delta H overall, it's the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Basically, it's the right side minus the left side. So we're going to key that into our calculator. We take negative 2,057.6 kilojoules and subtract 456.4 kilojoules. And when you punch that into your calculator, you find that the answer is negative 2,514 kilojoules per mole of reaction. So what does that negative sign imply? Well, it tells us this is an exothermic reaction. And that's going to be the case with pretty much any combustion reaction, isn't it? This is going to be an exothermic process. This is telling us if you take two moles of acetylene gas, C2H2 gas, and react that with five moles of oxygen gas, you're going to produce four moles of carbon dioxide gas along with two moles of water vapor. And in the process of doing that, you're going to release 2,514 kilojoules of heat energy. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope this video was able to take a concept that sometimes looks a little bit intimidating, 
uh, calculating delta H from enthalpies of formation and simplified it down into something that you can tackle pretty easily. If you learned something from this video, please hit that thumbs up button and please consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.